Good morning once again YouTubers. Uh, today we're going to show you something that's uh, hard to find. You, don't, you, you just don't see these in the marketplace anymore. Uh, first of all, not a whole lot were made. But uh, let me give you a little background first. This is a model 405 Bell sound tape cartridge player slash recorder. Now Bell to my knowledge made six units all together and um, they weren't all recordable. I happen to have, let's see, one, two, three, four different varieties of the six that they produced. Uh, I showed you previously in one of my other videos a 404, which is strictly a playback unit. This looks very similar, except it has the ability to record as well. Um, again, getting back to the history, these are the sound tape cartridges. That's what they look like in comparison to what would later be on, uh, be called the compact cassette. Now RCA introduced the, the uh, large cassettes here in 1957, but they were very slow at licensing the system. They were slow at producing recorded material, and they were only in vogue for about five or six years. I believe by 1963 they were pretty much gone, and uh, they just never caught on, and they should have. I mean, it's a very simple system. It takes quarter-inch tape. Instead of being reel-to-reel, -reel, they put it on a cassette. And uh, there wasn't a whole lot of pre-recorded material available, so they're difficult to find today, but uh, they're out there. You can find them. Later on, Phillips would pick up the slack and make the compact cassette. Now, this was something that was very popular in the cars, if you remember back in the 70s. These were very popular. And uh, today, you don't much hear about the compact cassettes anymore either, since the advent of uh, CDs and DVDs and what the hell not. I mean, there's all kinds of material you can you can uh, record and play back on now today that's smaller and uh, more easily used. Uh, this model, the 405, uh, this particular model again does have meters on both sides for recording. It features left volume control, right volume control, bass and treble, which controls everything. And you have a selection of uh, tape playing, phono, auxiliary, microphone, and of course recording. And this is kind of unique in that for whatever reason they never put a counter in the damn things and they never had the ability to rewind. In fact if we look up top it says on, off, and then fast, neutral, and play. They tell you to rewind the tape, you're actually to turn the tape over and put it in the fast forward position to rewind the tape. Kind of stupid, but that's the way they did it. In fact, in none of their players did they have a counter, and to my knowledge, the only one that had a rewind available was the model 601 and 603, which were portable players. In fact, I have a video of the 603 as well. So let's give you a quick demonstration. This thing has got a ton of volume. I mean, this thing has a, a pair of uh, 12AX7s and quad 6AQ5s. Uh, it, it's phenomenal. The sound is great. I'm playing them in not so hot speakers and Magnavox speakers, but they're really portable speakers. But it has enough balls to punch through the biggest of speakers. It's really a phenomenal sounding player. So let's go forward with it and uh, we'll give a little demonstration.
to put it into neutral. And, um, you know, there was questions as to whether or not uh, any really popular songs were available. Well, I'm proud to say, yes, there was. In fact, I was able to get one myself. It's Elvis in GI Blues. And I would have played this for you, but I know damn well I'm going to get zinged for it, and I'll take the video off because of it. So, for that reason, I can't play it back to you, but it does sound magnificent through the player. Closing the top here, I'm going to give you a quick peek along the back. You'll notice that the uh, tubes are, are set so that they vent out the back, and there's a shield around it so that you don't accidentally hit it. You'll notice that there are inputs along the side there for um, um, a, a regular record player if you want, that is a turntable uh, for magnetic cartridge. And um, on this side here, the outputs for the speakers. Also a couple of 117 volt line outs uh, to be able to use your uh, auxiliary, whatever it might be, whether you had another tape deck or, or a turntable or whatever. Turning quickly over here, this will be another video I'll be doing shortly. This is something that just came in this week. This is a Bell model number 402. This is a playback unit only. It has a preamp in it. Um, this is the first one I've ever seen. I, I snapped it right up when I saw it. And um, this ought to be an interesting item too. If you think that you're going to buy any of these and they're ready to go, you can pretty much forget it. Because any one of these I've had so far, um, the, while the tubes may be good, and in fact I had one or two bad tubes, but while the tubes may be good, the, um, the belts, there are two in each of these here, uh, always need replacing and um, they have ceramic capacitors in there which usually are pretty good but in this one here every last capacitor had a crack in it. Uh, I didn't rebuild the amplifier in this one here. I had uh, Chris Cuff do that for me. I, I just don't have the time. That's my problem. I hardly have the time even to do this stupid video here and I'm doing it on the kitchen table which my wife really loves. I gotta put all the shit away when I'm done. <laughs> so in any event you're getting to see something different. Uh, these aren't often found like I said and they're fantastic. They're better than any one of the RCA units. They sound good, they work good, just two things they lack and that's a tape counter and rewind. But they are what they are as they say. So let's um, say goodbye and um, I hope you enjoyed seeing something different and built in 1959 incidentally. Have a great day.